This is my grandfather, or as we knew him, Agumagungu. Well, this is him when he was young and handsome. This is how I mostly remember him, when he was older and had grandkids. Anyway, I'm here to tell his story. When we were growing up, we didn't really know much about my Gungu, who is my mother's father. He wasn't like our other grandparents. He didn't teach us how to ride bikes. He didn't shower us with hugs and kisses. He didn't tell jokes. In fact, he didn't really talk to us much at all. He was a little bit of a ghostly figure. And when I got older, I realized I didn't know anything about my Chinese grandfather. Even his English name, Herbert, seemed strange. The only other Herbie I knew was from was a Volkswagen Beetle who had a personality of its own and zoomed around in movies, matchmaking couples and thwarting bad guys. This was so different from the very quiet man who always cooked for us and seemed happy to see us, but rarely spoke to us and rarely gave us a hug or a kiss or even a smile. It got me wondering, what was life like for Gong Gong when he lived in China? And why had he left? Was it weird for him coming to Australia? What, what had he done when he got here? So I decided to try and find out. So I did do an interview with my Gong Gong. I did it quite a few years ago, in fact. He was 86 years old at the time and not in the best of health. And I'll share a few of the stories that he shared with me at the time a little bit later on in the video. But for now, I did want to say that yes, there is a monkey sitting on my lap. I just wanted to make sure that you were paying attention and that you could pick out any changes, any errors in continuity that needed to be pointed out to me. And I know it's not the same. There's a monkey. Go away. I miss you. Anyway, I did find out from my grandfather, my Gung Gung, a few things that I didn't know before. I found out that his real Chinese name is Lao Chang Wing and that he came from a small village called Sichung near what was then called Canton and what is now called Guangzhou and which now is a massive city of like 10 million or more people but the village he came from only had about 100 houses and it's close to the border with Hong Kong and I can tell you that when he did come to Australia he stayed in Australia for the rest of his life and over the period of his working life he was based mostly in Townsville, which is in North Queensland, and he ran a series of small businesses until he was able to save up enough money to buy a shop. And it was like a local deli, as you would call it here in WA, but over there they called it a corner store. And it was open seven days a week from, I think, 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. And no other stores were open that often at the time. So it became really popular and everyone knew it and he did really well out of it. And he got married had four kids and they all went to university and he was very proud. But that's his story in a nutshell. Um, but I wanted to focus a little bit more on, on one part of his story, which we'll get to a little bit later on in the video. Could you, could you just press that button over there just to, um, just to stop the, the recording? Yeah, no, not with your teeth. Just, yep. Yeah. I was born in 1919. I left the village when I was 20, I think, or something like that. Mm, 1940. Mm, nine, 19. So I was 21. Born in 1919, I was 21. I went to this small school, only a few boys, a few girls, not a big school. We have about uh, three or four school in the village. After that, we leave and went to a place called, uh, it's more like, how do you say, um, village, mm, but like a big town. And there they have like big school and everything. So when I was 14, I had to go to that school and live there, like boarding school, for four years and I finished uh, the course, teacher's college, yeah, teacher's college. 
And then I went back to the village and helped at the school. But you know, it's very poor there. There's no wages. Whoa, hold up there. Did you guys hear what he just said? No wages. That means no pay. I mean, you guys are really awesome. I really like teaching you. But I don't know if I could do it for no money ever. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm a good person. I think I just want the money. And in 1939, the Japanese, they took the whole river. Don't you know about the Japanese invading China? No, it, it, was it the, just before the Second World War? I don't know if I've got any footage of it. Anyway, I'll have a look on the computer. Can you stop trying to edit my movie for me? Anyway. Twelve Japanese planes bombed a Chinese city. Trivial. The League branded Japan an aggressor, and Japan resigned, deeply hurt. Japan moved further into China. Pausing only for breath, Japan inflated the Mukden incident into the China incident. It was not war, the Japanese said. 400 million Chinese were caught up in this incident. China was looted and shelled and put to the torch. Chinese forces united under Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek were pressed back by the invaders. China moved her armies and her meager war industries far into the interior. The Chinese fought on not so much with weapons as with space and time. Whoa, pretty heavy stuff, huh? Yeah, no wonder Kung wanted to get out of there. You would have stayed in fort, would you? Is that your karate moves? Well, we'll see what happened with him. The Japanese, they took the whole river. So I had to get away. And in our village, we heard about the Japanese coming. It's a small village. And we heard news from the bigger villages. But there's nothing we can do about it. We can't read about it in the newspaper. We only hear about it from the people. And we know this is coming, but there's nothing we can do. We're in the village. We can't fight against the Japanese. We just hear that they're coming. So when we get a chance, we try to leave. And my father, I was very lucky. He already going to Australia. And he already organized a visa to get me out as a student. I, I supposed to go back to China after I finish study. And I can't stay in Australia older than 24. But when the World War II start, they don't want to send me home. So I was very lucky. Practicing your karate again. Well, I think it's pretty lucky that you can do that. Because if Gung Gung hadn't been able to get that visa, then who knows if we'd even be here right now. But you'd be here, but I wouldn't be here, because I just might not ever have been born. Oh, yeah, very funny. Yeah, it's very sad, yes, that I'm not here. I wasn't born. Anyway... I think it's an interesting story and I think it shows how lucky some migrants are and the fact that when they are coming to Australia it's often because they're coming from a pretty terrible situation in their home countries. Anyway, thanks for helping me to tell the story. Wave to the kitties. No, that's nice. Blowing kisses.